Could your gold contain stolen gold? Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video I will be telling you the brief story of the Brinks Matt gold bullying robbery that happened in 1983. I'll leave a link in the description to an article that explains it in further detail. So before we get started, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button. On the 26th of November 1983, six men broke into Brinks Matt's depot near Heathrow Airport in London. They expected to find millions of foreign currency, but instead they found tons of gold bullion worth up to 26 million pound at the time, like these coins here. There's a new series coming out on BBC One that recreates this whole story. The gang of criminals were carrying guns and one of the gang members was a security guard who worked there, so he let them in. The criminals handcuffed all staff members and even hit one on the head with a pistol. One employee had petrol poured on him. The robbers threatened to set this guy on fire if the guards didn't reveal the vault's combination numbers, so they had no choice but to give up the combination code. Upon opening the vault, the robbers discovered not only gold, like this gold, but they also discovered diamonds and cash. At about 8.30am, 15 minutes after the gang had already left the building, one of the staff members managed to break off his handcuffs and he raised the alarm but the gang was long gone at this point. So they had stolen roughly 6,800 ingots of gold, totaling to 3 tons of gold. Um, after this the police got reports about 2 days later from a couple in Somerset, which is about 300 miles away from London, who told the police that they had noticed a white hot crucible which is useful for melting down gold and they, found it in, they noticed it in their neighbour's property but the officers failed to follow this lead up. The police raided uh, this property 14 months later. They arrested the local jeweller and bullion dealer called John Palmer, but he was cleared of all charges in court because they had no evidence on him. So after they fled the scene in London, the, rob the robbers turned to Kenneth Noye, who was one of Britain's most notorious criminals. They asked him to help, help turn the bullion, gold, the gold bullion into cash in return for a small cut of the proceeds. So Noye combined some of the gold with copper in order to disguise the gold. But eventually detectives found £100,000 worth of gold wrapped in cloth in a drainage trench at Noye's former home. This guy was eventually imprisoned for helping to launder cash for multiple um, scandals. But before he was imprisoned, he knifed an undercover detective to death after catching the detective sniffing around his house. Many more events happened during this whole scandal. There were a lot of killings and also a lot of suicides. Um, so the most fascinating part of this story is the legacy that it left behind. This, this legacy relates to the fact that anyone who has bought gold from 1984 onwards up to now is likely to contain traces of the Brinks Max gold robbery in their ounces. So potentially these gold coins could contain gold from that robbery but stolen gold so this means your gold or small parts of your gold could be made up of gold that was stolen by these criminals and ultimately your gold is part stolen so this robbery likely birthed the large-scale international money laundering which was the other part of his legacy but this just shows that it's very important to have good security for your gold. Make sure you have it in a very secure place, you have a good safe, you have... Don't put it all into one place, maybe have like three different locations where you're going to store your stack. And so anyway guys, I um, hope you learned something from this story. If you did, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. So catch you later gold stackers.